Yeah. Hi, I'm Jacob Heinz from Cisco. Uh, I have another um, idea for the route leak uh, protection. Okay. <coughs> uh, what is a route leak? Uh, if you're an AS and you receive a route from one other AS and you send it to the other AS and neither side is paying you, then you're leaking the route. <coughs> so that's basically a route leak. Um, <coughs> why does anyone care other than the AS that's actually doing the leaking? <coughs> and that is because the AS that's doing the leaking usually is a small customer AS and he has uh, very small pipes and if you send the whole internet to him, he's going to drop it all. So that's why you care. <coughs> uh, what did I write there about that? Okay. Uh, so the concept of this one is that um, suppose um, customer AS3 <coughs> there has two transits, uh, two transit providers, AS1 and AS2. <coughs> now, he sends a route and in that route he puts the community that says my transits are AS1 and AS2. <coughs> so that, now AS1 will receive a route through the other way from AS2. Now he looks at the community that he already got and says, yes, AS2 is a transit, so okay, that route is not a leak. <coughs> now AS3 sends the route to AS4 as he normally would, but AS4 sends it on to AS1 but AS1 already has that community from the other route that says AS4 is not a transit. So now that, so now AS1 can see, well, I received it from AS4, but AS4 was not a transit, so that must be a leak. So that's the idea. <coughs> right, now to encode this, um, I've decided to do that uh, in, uh, in BGP and to encode it on each route in this individually. And the reason for that is that uh, you may be sending uh, certain routes um, to certain transits and other routes to different transits. Um, there are some uh, uh, CDNs around that um, Will send to, will will have lots and lots of transits, but they send a single route to each transit, but not to any of the others. So the relationship, um, the uh, transit peer customer relationship is different for different routes. So I put the uh, put the information uh, onto the route themselves. Right. <clears throat> um, also in different locations. Uh, in different regions of the world, um, you might have different transits. So you want to do that. You want to send the route in those locations with those transits and in other locations with other transits or not transits. No. Um, so uh, I have found that the large community is a convenient uh, place to put that information. Uh, so that's what I chose to do. Uh, so in the, in the large community, again, um, we have uh, three 32-bit fields. <coughs> uh, so I've chosen to use the, the first th The first field is to be a, uh, the well-known number to say this large community re uh, indicates a route leak protection. Uh, and then the other two is uh, the nominating AS and the nominated AS. So the nominating AS is the one who says, these are my transits. <coughs> uh, now, if an AS does not have any transits, then he puts in, he nominates AS number zero as being my transit. That is to distinguish um, those ASs that do not send anything and those ASs that have no transits. Uh, so, uh, what do we got there? <coughs> uh, so that's just detail there. 
which let me let me just read that. Okay, next one. <coughs> ah, yes. Uh, there are sometimes uh, sometimes um, an AS will split a prefix and send split prefixes to uh, to a content provider, perhaps, uh, in order to do the traffic engineering to say, oh, I want. A, parts of my network to come through here and other parts of my network to come through there. And so they split the prefix and send it to the content provider. Now, when the content provider leaks those more specifics out to the internet, then all of a sudden they just draw all the traffic for that and they drop it, right? Which happened in Japan a month and a half ago, I think. Um, <coughs> so, uh, so my answer for that one is, um, to put another um, route leak protection community in um, that says uh, this is a transit for all of the more specific routes to this route. Okay, so, so, so now we have two of them. We have one that says um, these are my transits for this route and the other one that says these are my transits for all of the more specific routes of this route, the ones with the longer net masks. <clears throat> okay, so how do you find a leak? Now, uh, so 64500 uh, sends, uh, sends two of these. It, it says, uh, so along the top here we have nominated is 64500. My transit is 64501. And another one, this is um, my transit is 64502. <coughs> uh, now on the same route, uh, it also gets another one from that guy on the right, 501. And 501 has no transits, so he just sends the one that says, my transit is zero. <coughs> um, so these are the um, RLPs that 502 has received from wherever it's receiving them from. <coughs> now, uh, now we get a route. Let's get the red one at the bottom. <coughs> so. Um, 64500 sends off to the left to 504, who sends it up to 502. So 502 gets an AS path in that. The AS path is 504500. Uh, so he's going to look at 64500, says, uh, do I have any RLPs for 64500? Um, yes, I do. That's the first two there. And is 64504, is that in the list of transits? Um, no, it's not there. We have 501, we have 502, but we don't have 504. So 504 is a leak because it cannot follow from 500. <coughs> uh, there are some other uh, proposals uh, in the ITF. Uh, how to fix this. Uh, one of them is to put a bit into uh, in, in band into the actual route that is leaking. <coughs> now, um, that requires the AS that's leaking to pass that bit through. Right? Um, and as some of you may know, uh, there's no such thing as a transitive attribute in a BGP anymore. Uh, because um, some years ago there was a few bugs um, where routers crashed because they had unknown attributes sent and then we all went and put this protection in so that you can drop unknown attributes. And so a lot of people drop unknown attributes. So transitive attributes get dropped. Unknown transitive attributes get dropped. So, uh, so for this proposal, um, the leaking AS does not need to pass anything, it does not need to upgrade any code. Um, 
Now, uh, a Tier 1 transit or any transit um, can sell this um, drought leak protection to its customer. Um, the customer puts a community... Uh, that was a part I missed. There's a, there's a way to, uh, to do this with a regular community. The regular community is smaller, so you can't put all the information in. Uh, in a regular community, you can only say, um, uh, this one is my transit, but he has to be 16-bit AS. <clears throat> so in that case, um, the customer writes into a community, these are my transits, and then the ISPs will pass that along amongst each other. <clears throat> uh, Okay, okay, I have the route servers in there, the IXP route server. Um, the route server does not put its ASN into the AS path, so there's no way to check whether the route server leaked anything. Um, now, a, a route server does not actually need to have any uh, transit or peer or customer type of relationship with any of its clients um, because it doesn't put its ASN into the AS path the actual IXP route server clients themselves have relationships amongst themselves only. <clears throat> right. uh, what I mean, the, the ISP can sell a route leak protection to the customers without having to rely on other ASs to cooperate because it only sits through them. The leaking AS does not have to cooperate. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now I have a few more uh, examples here. Uh, so, uh, what's this one? Ah, uh, this is a typical valley leak. <clears throat> so, um, AS1 sends a route to its customer. Uh, its customer is dual home. It sends it to its other home. And... Uh, because the route leak protection is passed through between uh, peer ISPs. Uh, the, the receiving ISP can detect that, can detect that, uh, uh, here we go, um, AS, AS1 has no transits, it says, it says to AS2, I have no transits, um, but we got a route from AS1 through AS3 so that's detected as a leak. <clears throat> okay, here is, um, here is one uh, that could be seen as a leak. Um, <clears throat> uh, here we say, a, um, AS1, no, AS1, I don't have any transits. No, he sends that to uh, his peer, uh, but his peer sends the route to the customer. The customer sees an AS path, <coughs> right, where uh, it appears that um, AS2 is transiting for AS1. So that could be a leak. However, um, the route was received from a transit itself, therefore it's not a leak. So that's uh, part of the rule. Um, if you receive it from a transit, um, these RLPs uh, don't matter. Right. Uh, this one's probably pretty similar to the first one. Um, AS1 to uh, uh, Tier 1, he's got no transits. Uh, sends to AS2, but AS2 sends to appear. And again, um, from the RLP, we can see AS2 is not a transit, therefore it's a leak. Okay, uh, this one is, again, so um, AS2 is originating or passing on a customer route. Uh, he says, um, my transit is AS1. Uh, he also sends it to a peer. The peer is supposed to actually only send to a customer, but he sends it up to the transit. So, again, we see the AS path uh, with three after two but the RLP does not list three as being a transit, so it's detected. 
Okay, this was the uh, more specific uh, that I was talking about. Um, <coughs> so uh, AS2 uh, appears with the content provider AS3. Um, he has a route um, 10 double colon slash 12, so that's his um, his aggregated route that uh, de defines his total network, and uh, he sends that to the internet. Uh, but he splits that prefix uh, to um, 10 double colon 13 and 18 double colon slash 13, so that's split the prefix um, because he wants part of the traffic from AS3 to come across the top and uh, other parts of the traffic to come across the bottom. So that's how he achieves that. Um, <coughs> but now, um, AS3 leaks one or both of those uh, more specifics to the internet again. Now with the covering route leak protection, uh, AS1 can detect that uh, there should be no transits for um, uh, any uh, any more specifics of 10 double column 12. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, uh, this is another one, uh, but the the RLP, the route leak protection uh, community, uh, uh, originates at AS2. It, it goes to the tier one provider, AS1. Um, now, he, the AS1, he shares it with AS4, and they trust each other to do that. Uh, so AS4 detects the leak because AS3 is not a transit. So, uh, so this is the case where the route leak protection uh, community is uh, shared with, uh, uh, with a tier two uh, provider. Uh, uh, transits uh, share the R, uh, route leak protection. So this is the uh, this is the case I see. I would imagine mostly would happen um, that the uh, tier one provider uh, receives it from its customer. Um, they send it to all of their peers, and that's as far as as it goes in most cases. Um, so uh, we can detect. That is, so AS2 is originating. It sends route leak protection up to its transit, but it sends the route across to its peer. Um, its, its peer leaks up, uh, and the, the uh, tier ones have shared the route leak protection. So AS4 knows about it. AS4 knows, knows about who its transits are from AS1 and it receives the route from AS3, it receives the leak from AS3. So um, I think that's the biggest point here is that um, the route leak protection community um, travels across the top and the leaks travel in a different place along the bottom. <coughs> okay, this is the um, example about the route servers. The route servers cannot have any relationships with its uh, uh, with its clients. Um, you see here, um, <coughs> AS1 is a provider to AS2, but AS3 is a customer of AS2. Uh, so for that to occur, um, there is no possible relationship that AS2 can have with the IXP in order to make those other relationships work. Right now here, um, I've invented some uh, configuration uh, for iOS XR. <coughs> uh, so the way that this would work in the software is that the software would uh, match the route leak protection communities against any received routes and then mark, um, mark any received routes. Uh, a, with a validity bit uh, that you can test in the route policy. Um, 
yeah, if not accepting forwarded RLPs, then you delete these large communities. Um, the the Routelik protection uh, communities uh, should really only be received from your direct neighbour. So your, if your direct neighbour, uh, uh, your customer, uh, tells you who his transits are, who his other transits are. Anything further away um, is maybe not trustworthy. I think perhaps the um, tier one ISPs could uh, trust their peers uh, with this information, but too much further. Uh, it's not effective anyway, and they, you, you can't trust an AS10 hops away. So. Um, you would put that statement there, delete large community in. Um, that's the 41001001000. That is the well known number. And then you will put the word not PRAS. That means that um, if that next number is not your peer, it would delete that community. And the star means anything for the next one. <coughs> um, the example here is. Um, if the AS path validity, which is that bit that the software sets, um, is leaked, then set your local preference. You could do other things, you could drop it, or you could just make it totally invalid, um, sort of like uh, an X-top that's unreachable. Uh, and then on the outbound, neighbour outbound, you put um, if you're not sending any, if you're not forwarding any RLPs that you received, um, then you just put that. So you delete, um, you delete them, and you put your own RLPs in, uh, like this, and you put additive. Whoops, I went backwards. Okay. <coughs> uh, this is pretty much the same. Uh, this is one with an AS that does have transit providers. And so the top part of that is the same. Yeah, at the bottom part is a set large community. These are my two transit providers. I am 64500, and my providers are 64501 and 64502. So I add those two large communities. Like with the, the one before, this guy has no transit providers, so he sets large community with a zero to say that he has none. Okay, so this one, this one is just for a customer who's requesting um, route leak protection for his routes. So he just, uh, on his neighbour out policy, he just says set these communities. Um, so this is one for just setting communities. Set large community uh, will be the same as the bottom one here. <coughs> so set community is that one. That, but that only works. Uh, for 16-bit uh, ASs, and uh, it cannot be passed on to your neighbours. And this was uh, this is automating the peer locking concept that Job Snyder's had um, provided some time ago, and I've got an ITF draft there. Oh, as a, as a, as a follow-on from Job's um, talk uh, today, um, uh, we are very interested in knowing what, uh, what your thoughts are on, uh, on the things that Job wants. Um, I think in particular that one about the um, iOS causing the route leaks. Um, if you want that or if you don't want that, um, there's a lot of Cisco people doing brownie in motion around here, so if you bump into one, let us know. Um, questions? Jeff Houston, AP Nick. Look, Jeff. when you have a hammer, everything is not a nail. You, you have to exercise discretion. And this strikes me as a remarkably complicated approach to a really simple environment. As a BGP speaker in a routing system, 
All I want to do is not lose money. And preferably, I'd like to make money. I pay money to transits. Customers pay me money. So this is really simple. It's called valley-free routing. What I learn from customers, I send to everyone because I get money from customers. What I learn from transits, I only send to customers because I pay money to those transits and I'm not going to give everyone a free ride. And what I learn from peers, I only send to customers. This only needs one bit. It's called the up bit. Right? You with me so far? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I've seen I, that one. We've I seen it. it We've seen I the up bit. From, when I learn it from a peer, I clear the up bit because it's gone sideways already. When I learn it from a transit, I clear the up bit. When I learn it from a customer, I set the up bit. When the up bit's set, I only send it upwards. That's all you need. So this seems an incredibly complicated approach to what is a really simple control problem. Don't send what you learn from transits or peers to other transits or peers. That's really what you're trying to say here. Tell that and to you, the leaking AS. Right? Tell them to do that. They don't do that. That's a remarkably complicated approach to a very simple problem that you can do with a much smaller community than what you're doing here. So there are other proposals in the IETF. This is not the only one. Yeah, I know. And, and if this think. is a surrogate IETF BGP meeting, then I'm going to say <laughs> the same thing here as I would say there. I just don't understand why it needs this level of complexity for a remarkably simple problem that we've been living with for the last 20 years. Thanks. Senator Microphone, please be quick. We have only got three minutes for three comments. Uh, thank you for the talk, Jacob. I think you goofed slightly in saying you want to strip out everything except the peer ASS communities because in your drawings you show that the RLPs have to be passed along so that the RLP for this AS goes through this AS and over to this one so he can make the decision that that's not a valid pathway. Mm -hmm. If you're dropping the RLPs that are not from your peer AS, he'd never get the RLP from the guy down here. So just, just as a pointer, I, I think you don't want to strip the not peer AS RLPs. Otherwise, it only protects the people you're talking to and doesn't protect against that third hop route leak. Uh, the, the one other piece to this is how do you make sure that the person who's leaking isn't accidentally rewriting the community and putting a community on that says, oh, this is a valid transit pathway? Oh, okay. Um, so, so I had uh, some more to the rules there, uh, which are deep detail in the, um, in the draft, uh, and that is um, if, I get an, if I get an RLP set directly from my neighbour, then that one trumps all of the others. So you have a hierarchy of, of yeah, okay. that, uh, yeah, got yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. Chair Provo, Google. Um, Matt hit my forgery rewrite question, but the other comment is merely um, for the 01 version of the draft, I'd suggest changing the order of the elements, how you write that, so it's consistent with um, 7454 and put my AS first, the way we did with the overall large communities. Uh, no, no. In the in, uh, in the large communities, you put the my AS first, right? Uh, but um, that is an indication of what the rest of them are. Right. I was just meaning that um, 7454 uh, recommends that you only pay attention to stuff with your AS, and then regarding uh, security against um, uh, 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 people sending you signaling data, that. Um, you don't want them to send, so you the order of operations within that RFC recommends you only pay attention to stuff received with my AS first, and then don't strip anything else. Because if we do it the other way, then we may have to update something. Yeah. For okay. Well, uh, well, well. Th this one is to be a well-known large community uh, you know, that where the first number indicates that it is a well-known large community, and we know what to do with it. Okay. Yeah. So, so Rudiger, we're very much out of time. I think this is getting uh, into a hallway conversation. So the last question is at the back seconds. center mic. Uh, I just want to point a little bit. I'm from Moscow IXP, and we uh, already implement a lot of communities. And uh, the now most of uh, platforms, most of vendors faced with the problems that it's became to grow amount of the community that it's assigned to one prefix. 
With this uh, complicated approach, you uh, just extend uh, th this problem too much. And now uh, we also and several XPs limiting the amount of uh, communities in the prefix. So it could be just stripped in, in case if it could be too much. So uh, it's, it's not, I think it's not a good solution for, for that. Okay, yeah, it puts more communities into the route and it provides a service. Zero. All right, thank you, Jacob. Thank you, everyone. Okay.